Uh, my name is Sambul Gimire, uh, and uh, in my career path, I got accelerated uh, to Slack Linear Accelerator Laboratory, uh, which is run by Stanford University, and, and that's the summit, right? And uh, I'm here for a little over uh, 15 years uh, now. Uh, so my interest uh, are to combine our uh, advances uh, in ultra-fast laser technology with the advances uh, in material sciences and uh, uh, be able to solve uh, new problems um, and, uh, you know, such as, uh, you know, possibly to come up with some uh, breakthrough in uh, pushing the fundamental limits of uh, next generation electronics um, and perhaps uh, improving, improving our communication systems uh, in the future and, and so on. You know, I thought it was a challenge, right? You know, my advisor told me that, uh, you know, Shambhu, your pro project could be, you know, producing the shortest uh, pulse, shortest uh, laser pulse, and then measure it, right? And I thought that, that was, a, that was the, you know, um, uh, you know, a very good challenge to have. Um, and that was the beginning. Uh, and, uh, and then after I moved on uh, to my, uh, you know, independent career, uh, I started to push the boundaries of Arisic and uh, science and uh, try to move this toward, uh, uh, you know, more applied sciences, such as uh, condensed matter physics and uh, material science, perhaps uh, one or two steps closer to real world applications, uh, let's say. I think that the, the future is, uh, is, uh, is, is probably going to be really pumped by the modern X-ray free electron lasers. Uh, you know, so far we have been doing the added second science with the tabletop light sources with the lasers that, you know, either we purchase or we put together ourselves in a tabletop setup, right? And uh, now we have the X-ray free electron lasers, uh, you know, uh, also, you know, um, trying to produce the added second pulses um, in the X-ray wavelength range, uh, even, you know, down to hard X-ray wavelength range. And so I think that would be the uh, next big thing, uh, which is to use this uh, X-ray free electron laser-based second X-ray pulses, uh, you know, the, the, for a lot of uh, applications, right? Because of the X-rays you have now, both the, you know, second uh, time resolution, temporal resolution, and uh, possibly the imaging capabilities. Uh, so you can, you know, be specific about you know, certain elements, uh, you know, in, in, uh, in the dynamics. So as says, right, you know, if you're, if you're doing the marathon run, like if you have the optical pulses, you just know, you know, the, you know, the fastest uh, run was like by, you know, this time and then, and, and so on. Uh, with the X-ray pulses, you get the element specificity. So, so this exact runner was there by you know this time, and the other runner by this time, for example. So, this is what you will get with X-rays: the element specificity uh, of the you know while you are doing the um, imaging of the uh, motion of electrons, maybe the motion of uh, you know lattice uh, and related uh, dynamics in uh, even in complex materials. This is, uh, you know, really the uh, frontier year that brings together uh, the laser expertise uh, and, uh, um, uh, you know, a core physics uh, expertise, uh, you know, from, let's say, from solid state physics, um, from AMO physics. Um, and also, it actually pushes you to develop new technologies, um, right? Um, so the, the technology of the laser science, uh, you know, I think it, it pushes you to, toward uh, you know, making uh, short pulses of light for a lot of other applications, um, and I think is this is really uh, like at the at the at the frontier of uh, the ultra fast sciences, um, and uh, you know I really like that it connects to you know different branches of physics and chemistry. My main message is that the arrow second uh, physics should be the next. Uh, you know, formal, um, you know, one of the branches of physics, uh, such as, you know, we have astrophysics, right? Uh, statistical mechanics, classical mechanics. Uh, so I, I give this challenge to the young folks, uh, as well as the, the senior folk, right? Now, uh, for example, if you are a senior uh, professor, uh, then, you know, you should write books uh, in aerosecond physics. And uh, if you are teaching uh, so many courses in the physics department, uh, then you you should register like the courses in aerosecond physics and come up with uh, interesting um, syllabus for the courses, right? And uh, uh, similarly, if you're 
uh, young uh, uh, folks like trying to uh, find out what to do next, uh, right? So this is the you know the the, the way that you could uh, image the fastest moving objects such as electrons inside the materials. So you want the fastest electronics, like the fastest Wi-Fi, right? In in the fast you know very fast devices for your, a lot of applications. Uh, and I think the you know the the ways to look at the the ultra fast motion of the electrons uh, uh, you know this could drive toward like uh, making faster switches uh, really fast uh, you know transistor like devices by using by combining this uh, you know lasers uh, and then materials uh, together so this is what would be the challenge for the you know young uh, folks uh, you know I, i'm pretty sure they would be excited to have that